when it doesn't happen, you know? So, another thing is when you get to the bridge, the section. Well, that would be a C in the bass, this C, if you're playing anything like standard tone. Not a horrible chord. But not as anywhere near as cool as having a C in the bass an octave lower. What a different feeling when you'd have to agree. You don't have to be a guitar player to know that. It just feels different, and I hope better, because you've given it this really strong foundation. So that's kind of tunings in a nutshell. That's why you use them, is for the chance to paint with a broader, on a bigger canvas, you know, with different techniques than you use with standard. I'm about to head to standard, so if anybody has questions about what I've been doing, fire away. And, and then I'll, but I'm about to abandon it. Everybody says, no, I'm really glad that we should be on the standard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. real, real quick with that Evo, is it just, you work it just over a string? One string at a time. It doesn't matter which string, it'll work on the bottom string, too. Okay, so that's good. Sure. Yeah, it sounds yeah. almost like a bow thing. Up top, it sounds more like a, a, a wind instrument. Yes. Okay. So you tend to arrange melodies to stay on one string a lot more than you would a normal plane. But I do have, I do go across the strings. It's, good. it's more troublesome, but it, I, sometimes there's just no other way. Okay. What are the notes again in standard? Is that E or something? <laughs> that Dan Curry calls that the E Gibby tuning. <laughs> I'm going to play for you in E, Gibby. So are you ready for like a quick five minute lesson in fairy style, like the overview? If you spit through my instructional DVD at like 10 times normal or 15 times normal, this is what you get. First of all, you've already gotten the basics of it. Your thumb has to learn to be an automatic bass player without you worrying about it. It's just the same way as we divide and conquer with our bodies. We walk, we drink coffee, we talk. Those things are all happening together. But you don't think of them. You think of them each as separate activities that you've learned, and then some part of your brain is in charge of administering them. You don't fall over if you have a new thought, you know? <laughs> it sounds stupid, but yeah, that's what trips people up. And when you're first learning a skill, when you're first learning to walk, you probably do fall over if you have a new thought, you know? If you're a toddler, that's probably all the brain, your whole brain is focused on just staying upright. But it gets to be muscle memory. That's what happens with the thumb. Get it going back and forth. Play the root, play the fourth string. When you get to the D, there's no low root. Play that F sharp. And get this where you can talk to people and balance a hot drink on your leg and watch TV at the same time. Then melody. All three fingers on the upper three strings. Notice the bass hasn't changed. Then individual notes. They're on the beat, so they're pretty boring. So the next time, instead of being on the beat, they're off the off the beat. This will be, no matter what you do with your fingers, your thumb will still be a bass player. And those nice scripted back and forth moves are really easy. The thumb doesn't have to challenge itself too much in the beginning. Later, of course, your bass lines will be all over the map. Just like we walk, we turn around, we skip, we run, we jump. And we can still, you know, carry conversation. But at first, just that nice back and forth is a comfortable routine to fall into. Then, I start teaching other time signatures so you're not just playing in fours. What happens pretty soon is your fingers can pretty much improvise and do whatever they need to do, and the thumb will take care of this stuff. Then we're off to the left hand. The left hand is the athlete of guitar playing. The right hand is like the operator, sits there and does what it does. Left hand, until you start doing weird tapping stuff, does all the gymnastics, reaching the notes. For, uh, here's a quick quiz for you, and it's a trick. It's a trick quiz. This chord here, G chord, I'm playing a pattern in fingerstyle. 
okay? How many fingers do I need to hold down with my left hand to make that happen? I hear two. I hear one. I hear three. Well, the closest to the correct answer is one, but it actually is something. It doesn't have to be a finger. This is the only fret of note I was playing. And it helps if you have short sleeve shirt <laughs> No sweaters. So, you get my point? I'm trying to give you new fingers to play something interesting with as a left hand, a melody or a whatever. But you can't play them unless you have them, and you can't have them unless you're not holding down notes you don't ever play. I never ever play this B note, but I hold it down because Melody told me to. <laughs> I jump over it, in fact. But if I take it off and I take this E, this one off the G, the G note on the E string, then I can play whatever I want, whatever I can reach. Or say that I don't want to play a note down here. Okay, Chris, I want to play a note up at the fifth fret, and I can't reach it from there. I'll try to fret it differently. independence of the left hand so you can play melodies to keep the bass going and if you can simplify your chords then you're, then you're, you're good to go and most all the chords should be simplified because you're not strumming you're just playing individual selected notes in an E minor chord you should just be holding down this E and this C and wait to see what else is required in e, a regular E chord that's usually I play with those two fingers and that's it
chords. E, A, and B. Bless those three chord songs. I mean, if you're playing an E, you're doing this. Playing an A, you're doing this. And you be this. That's it. That's the bass pattern all the way through. Now, the bass sounded real busy in that one section, but that's because I had my first finger doubling all the notes. So instead of just hearing this, I had upstrokes going on the D string, so you had double time in effect. The, the the speed is the, is the trick there, but anybody that plays finger talk gets the notion of that song. Well, here's what the thumb's doing. Here's what the finger's doing. Here's what the chords are doing. Yeah. Were you muting with your? Uh, yeah, for that song, I was muting with the muscle, the base of my thumb, you know, the meat of my thumb, because I didn't want the bass to sustain most of the time. I wanted that. That's one of the reasons thumb people you see people using thumb picks. I don't preach on thumb picks. There's a lot of great players that don't use them. But one of the things thumb picks do is bring your hand around this way, so if you want to mute, it's easier. You know, if you want to get down there, you still get a good, strong attack. With nail, it's hard to do both, to get a strong attack and mute. Was that all right? Mm -hmm. Good deal. Well, I thought I'd have, I had this other guitar up here. Let me ask you, does anybody out here have a 12-string? One, two, hey, that's not bad. Almost 10, maybe 9 or 10 of you. That's pretty adventurous. I do not know why more people don't have them. I mean, I know the six string is pretty much everybody, including mine's first choice as the most versatile instrument. There aren't many people that choose 12 string as their main instrument, but, you know, I have lots of guitars, and at some point, you, your search for what you can do on the guitar is gonna lead you to one. I think what people did was buy one back in the 60s or 70s, and they have what I call post-traumatic 12-string disorder. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, some of you have those. Yeah, it blew right. apart and it tortured your finger, and you could never get it in tune, and it turned out with, looking best with a philodendron grown out of the sound <laughs> hanging on the wall, or made into a clock or something. You know? 